I'm Jancy Despain with Bright Idea Tutoring. This is video number two in a six-part series on aldol reactions. In this video, I'm going to teach you a quick and easy way to predict products of aldol reactions that doesn't require you to go through the full process of the mechanism. I hope this will be helpful to you on your tests when all you have to do is predict product. But stay tuned because in video number three, we're going to learn what to do when you have warm conditions or a conjugated system. So just by predicting product here, your knowledge is not complete. You've got quite a bit more to learn, so don't stop now. Thanks for watching. When I'm predicting products, I want to dumb things down as much as possible so that there's very little thought and actually very little drawing. So let me show you how that works. My first step is to decide which alpha carbon is going to be deprotonated. In this case, I've got two alpha carbons, and since I've got an ethoxide base, I know I'm going to choose the more substituted one. So this is going to be my alpha carbon. And I'm just going to draw the enolate that's going to result from the deprotonation of that carbon. Now, there are two resonance structures that I could draw, but I'm only going to draw the one with the negative charge on the carbon. Now, it's true that this isn't the more stable resonance structure. The one with the negative charge on the oxygen is the stable one, and it's the one that the attack comes from. But my next step is to draw a bond between this alpha carbon and the carbonyl carbon of my other molecule. So it's going to be really convenient for me to work from this structure. As long as I remember that this isn't really the right structure to use if I have to draw the mechanism. But since I'm just doing this the easy way, this is the one I totally want to use. Then I need to draw my other unreacted ketone or aldehyde. And since this is the only ketone or aldehyde that I have, this is the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to redraw this guy just a little bit closer and I'm going to draw a bond between this carbon and my carbonyl carbon. So that means I can just draw a straight line that can represent a really long, ugly bond and I can push these electrons up onto the O. Then all I have to do is really redraw this with this bond a little bit shorter and kind of rotate everybody around so they look a little bit prettier. So I'm going to redraw this guy. See how I'm kind of stretching it out a little bit to make room for this new molecule that I'm going to pull in. So here's my bond to that alpha carbon. I've made it a little shorter. That's my product. All that's left to do is to protonate my O. And when I'm not drawing the mechanism, that just means I stick an H on there. And I'm done. Now, I want to point out here, this says that I only do this step of protonation if my reaction is in cold conditions. If I'm in warm conditions, I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to show you that for a few more steps, but I want you to be aware that it's coming up. So don't just shut down this video and say, ah, I got it. If you want to see that elimination, fast forward a little and you'll see how it goes. And now I'm dating myself because I just said fast forward like you're watching a VHS. Oh, I'm getting old. Anyway. This is our final product, and if we want to double check, which we should always do, we've got a carbonyl and an OH, and we can go O, 1, 2, 3, O, three C's between the O's. Let's practice another one. Okay, here's a ketone in a basic solution, so we can assume we're gonna do an aldol condensation. And our first step is to decide which alpha carbon is going to become the enolate. And of course, this is a standard base, so we know we're going to choose the more substituted, the more hindered alpha carbon. So your first step is just to draw the enolate. So you hit pause, and when we come back, I want to see your enolate. This is the enolate that you want to draw. You could have drawn it just like this, or you could have redrawn it over here. And all you had to do was put an electron pair and a negative charge on this carbon. And again, we chose this carbon because we have a medium strong alkoxide or hydroxide base. If we had a stronger base like LDA that's bulky, we would have chosen the less hindered alpha carbon. Now our next step is to redraw this same ketone or aldehyde 
and draw a bond between this alpha carbon and the carbonyl carbon of our other molecule and then push the electrons up onto the O. So why don't you try that, hit pause, and then let's come back and compare. Here's what I have. This was my alpha carbon, and I drew a bond to the carbonyl carbon of a duplicate molecule, and I pushed my electrons up onto the O. Now yours can be as ugly as mine. This bond can be long and horrible, as long as there is a connection between one alpha carbon and one carbonyl carbon. Now our next step is to redraw this with a prettier looking bond. These electrons actually pushed up so we have a single bond and our O protonated. So hit pause and draw that and let's see what you have. This is what my final product looked like. You can see that I've shortened this bond a little so that it looks more like this and I've just tilted this over to the side and made it a single bond and put a proton on the O. Now this is perfectly acceptable as a final product on an essay exam, but this is what it might look like on a multiple choice exam. So how do you make sure that this molecule matches this molecule? For me, the easiest way is to number it as though I would for IUPAC nomenclature. I would find the longest carbon chain that includes the dominant functional groups, of course the ketone, and also the hydroxy group. So my longest chain is this one. That's an eight carbon chain, and I would number it from the end that gives the carbonyl the lowest possible number. So I know it's an octanone. And then I see there is an ethyl and a methyl on the four, an ethyl on the 5, a methyl on the 6, the hydroxy's on the 5, and I would match those characteristics to all the possibilities in my multiple choice, and I would find the one that makes the most sense. So it's very difficult for me visually to match this molecule to a multiple choice test, but if we match the important features of our molecule to our different um, multiple choice answers, it makes it very easy. Let's try one more. And then please note that there will be many more examples in the crossed aldol and intramolecular aldol videos as well. Always your first job is to choose the correct alpha carbon to make your enolate. So why don't you pick your alpha carbon and we'll come back and compare. When we're predicting products, we just create an alpha carbon that has an electron pair. And we've chosen the less substituted one because our base is LDA, a super strong, bulky base. So we always choose the less substituted kinetic product. Our next step is to draw a bond between the alpha carbon and the carbonyl carbon of the ketone or aldehyde that we're working with. So take a moment and draw that connection, and then let's come back and see what you've got. I redrew my ketone here, and I drew a bond between the alpha carbon of this molecule and the carbonyl carbon of another molecule, and I pushed my electrons up onto my O. So this looks pretty scary right now, but we don't make the news, we just report it, okay? It doesn't matter how awful this molecule looks. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be right, okay? Now what we're going to do is redraw the molecule with this bond a little shorter, and we can move things around to make it look like it's got some space, okay? And we're going to draw this with a single bond, and we're going to protonate our O, and that's going to be our final product. This is what my final product looks like. I've drawn it like this because in this original form, the methyl over here just looks a little crowded to me. So I took this piece and flipped it sideways. I didn't have to do that and neither do you. This is a perfectly acceptable final product. But again, I'd rather take this and twist it so that my methyl is on this side. But if your product looks like mine, then you're good. Either version is just fine. 
And again, whenever we have an aldol product, we can always double check ourselves and see, do we have the same number of carbons before and after? And most importantly, do we have a carbonyl and an alcohol? And can we go O, one, two, three, O? So that's a pretty good indicator that we've done a good job putting our molecules together. Stay tuned for my next couple of videos and... Okay, wait a minute. Did you just watch this predicting product video and you think you know everything about aldol condensations? Because did you watch the mechanism video? The mechanism video uses a totally different intermediate to do the attack. And you probably have to know the mechanism for your test. And also there are different types of aldol condensations. And if you do the reaction in heat or on a conjugated system, you're going to get a different product. So don't stop now. Watch the rest of the videos, okay? My next couple of videos and you'll see how to do crossed aldo condensations and intramolecular aldo condensations and then a very important concept which is to see what to do if any of these reactions have been done in warm conditions or if they've been done on conjugated systems. Thanks so much for watching.